Okay, welcome back. So this is the third part on the Ensemble Logical Modeling Workshop. And in the prior sessions, uh, one and two, we first discussed doing the core business concepts, uh, not, which of course include the person, place, event, thing, other concept. Once we had those done, we looked at the natural business relationships, and we did reiterate the fact that we're talking about unique, specific, natural business relationships. So we've done some adjustment for uh, the sparsity and redundancy in order to come up with those. Now let's go ahead to the board and take a look at the last step. Okay, so in the last step of the ensemble logical modeling process, we now start to talk about the actual attributes, the context attributes that will describe each of these things. Now I'm not going to list a whole bunch of them for you here. I'll just talk mainly in categories because we're going to split satellites in Data Vault. We'll split satellites by what kind of data it is or if it repeats at different rates or changes at different rates. So let's take a quick look. On customer, for example, one of the things we can say about customer is, well, some kind of a main satellite. And the main satellite will have things in it that include, well, definitional components about the customer. So for example, it might be name, last name, date of birth, sex, and that type of information. Also for customer, we might have information about their address. And we might also have something that changes more frequently. For example, rating. Is this a good customer or is this a bad customer? Are they profitable? Are they not profitable? Those kinds of things. Likewise, for some of the other components on here, I can just quickly give you a view of what kinds of attributes might be on there. Okay, so just really quickly, some of the ones that could be context attribution describing any one of these components. And keep in mind that if we were to later add something like rating of our vendors, we don't need to re-engineer anything. We can simply add another satellite to the view. And of course, that's the agility feature of working with this paradigm. Let's go back to the slides. Okay, um, so we now finished the uh, broader view uh, of the third step. One thing I wanted to point out, however, is that when we ended with just those hubs and links, we sometimes refer to that as kind of a backbone model or the ensemble logical model from the perspective of a higher level where it could be usable for any of the different approaches that we use. Once we get into the satellite attribution that we just went through now, defining what types and groupings of information will describe and provide context for each of those core business concepts, now we need to start considering how we're also going to store it and how these things are broken apart. We do design satellites by the type of data, by the rate of change, things that change very frequently like ratings, um, source for some, but the overall best practice for how we design satellites, how we split up the context attributes is to do a good job. And actually we'll talk more about that in the future sessions, but keep in mind for now, uh, you're an architect modeler. When you design your satellites, do a good job. That's the best practice. We'll see you in the next session. Thank you.